If it ever comes when you have this message where it says invalid login credentials, you should have the ability to reset your password here using the forgot password feature. A new password will be sent to you either via your company email or via text message. Again, this is a temporary password. You'll be asked to reset your password once you do log in, but you can always use that feature there. If, however, let's say you do have any issues or perhaps you get a message that says you're locked out, you can always reach out to us at Health Information Management and we'll be happy to assist. So before I, I do get started with the past meds, I do want to point you to the bottom left here. If you ever do see this online feature, um, it means that you are currently enabled to MediShare. And what we want to do is that we want to make sure that MediShare is disabled. As a AMAP, um, you may have encountered some issues where you go to pass a med and let's say maybe an hour later, you either get a, um, an email from your supervisor or a call, or you even go back and you see that the meds that you know that you've given have not showed as administered. Part of this reason has been due to the MediShare being enabled. So in order to prevent some of these issues moving forward, we want to make sure that you go to um, admin here to disable this feature, then go to options. You unselect enable MediShare on this computer and you hit save. It's going to give you this message that you need to restart QuickMars, so you'll need to make sure that you do that. And now you'll notice that when you log back in at the bottom left, you no longer have that online showing up and you can proceed with passing meds. It will be the case that from time to time, depending on if you are on the same computer or on a, on a different laptop, you may see that message appear. If you ever do, just follow the same instructions, admin, options, and you unselect MediShare. It won't have to be every single time, but it'll just be a quick check and it will save you some time moving forward in the future. So. Now we'll move over to the past meds here. So when you do go to past meds, you'll have different times that appear, AM, noon, PM, night, and PRN, followed with the different administration times that are associated with that particular slot. So in this case, I'm gonna do the AM med pass. It'll tell me that I don't have a cart selected. You go to med, med cart, medication cart. We don't use the treatment cart at the time. So for now, you just hit OK and continue on. So you'll come to this screen here, which shows you all of the residents in this facility. Whenever you see the tiles in color, it means that there are medications that still remain to be given for these residents for this time. If you ever see that the tiles are grayed out, it means a couple of things could be that they don't have any medications to give to be given at this time the medications have already been given or perhaps they're out of the facility if you are let's say for example the overnight staff and you only will be giving the 6 a.m. meds you can always filter just those meds from up here so it'll tell you to pick a time you'll see 12 a.m. 6 a.m. 7 a.m. in this case I'm just going to choose a 6 a.m. And like I mentioned, if they don't have any meds to be given, they've now been grayed out, and now you can only focus on the one resident that does need to have the medication given. However, because I want to show you every all the medications, I'm going to unfilter and go into Sirius. If, let's say, you still want to filter and you haven't done it from the previous screen, you can also do, you can also do the same feature from this screen here. So you can go to pick a time, you can go to 6 a.m. and it'll just filter out to 6 a.m. and you can continue on with the med pass. 
something else is if you don't have um, any PRNs to give, you can hide those there. How do you know if something is a PRN? It's noted by a maroon tile. Also, it gives you the PRN message here. In comparison, you have your routine medications, which are in blue, and it also gives you the times here, 7 a.m., 10 a.m. So in this case, I'm gonna hide the PRN and continue on. So before we even also get started with the actual med pass itself, I do wanna point you to a couple of different items. At the top here, we have a bowel health warning that's appearing that's telling you that the resident has not had a recorded bowel movement in 65 hours. So again, what this means exactly is they haven't had a successful bowel movement. So in this case, you wanna make sure that you're reaching out to your nurse and starting the protocols. Um, again, one thing to also, uh, we, that we caution you on is that as the name app, you wanna make sure that you are always documenting any BMs that occur in the QuickMar. You wouldn't want to put our resident onto um, a protocol if it isn't if it isn't actually needed because they did have a, let's say a bowel movement yesterday, but either yourself or one another team member forgot to put it in. So just be mindful of that, and just make sure that you you are always charting um, those BMs when they do occur. The other thing here is that at times medications the same one may appear on the MAR more than once. And that reason may be because when, let's say, the supervisor of the nursing team was reviewing it, they may have started the new medication but did not end the previous one. So you can see on this screen, if you haven't already, that the benzotropine here is showing up twice. And it's the same exact dosage. The instructions are the same. So it means that there's an error here. The other thing that we want to caution you on, even if, let's say, this medication wasn't appearing more than once, is the time. So you see that a medication is being given at 12 a.m. For the most part, for most programs, we would say that meds are not being given at midnight. And again, this may just be an error when it was being approved. So again, if you ever do see that, you wanna just give a heads up to your nursing team, to your supervisor, just so that they know that to adjust the time to the correct um, administration that it should have. So moving at moving on to the actual med pass. So you have your, your three checks that you typically do. The first one being pulling it out of the med cabinet. And then from there you do your typical checks, but you're also comparing what's um, on the blister pack to what's on here. So again, here you'll have your script, you compare it and make sure that everything is good. If that's the case, you again, do what you typically would when having the medication in the house. But on top of that, you're now checking off and you would do so for each one of these medications. Because this one is a duplicate and we're not gonna give it, we're gonna leave it there. And you'll continue on. One thing else that you may be wondering if you haven't already figured it out here is that this medication is a bit different. It has this yellow, or I'm sorry, this purple line through it. And it also has the letter C, which denotes that it's a controlled substance. So in this case, just like you do on paper, you're gonna require be required to have a second signature, or in this case, someone else has to enter their credentials in order for you to complete the med pass, which I'll show you on the next screen. So you'll click this one off. You also have the ability to look at this info, which if you ever are curious, it gives you the adverse effects. It also gives you any label warnings. The pharmacy also imports, if they have an image, the image of what the medication should look like. That way you can make sure that what you're actually pulling is the correct one. For the most part, the pharmacy does stay up to date with making sure that the image here reflects the actual blister pack that you have. However, if you ever have any questions, always ask. Now you're gonna go to next. What this is telling you is that the medication, this one in particular, has not been selected and it's asking you why. If it's the case that maybe you actually, you no, know, you forgot to enter or select that you've um, reviewed it, again, it'll just be kind of a reminder for you to cancel and go back to select it. But if in this case, you actually meant to pass it as an exception, basically to say that you won't be giving it, 
you'll just enter Y. So again, there's a general here. If none of the other options apply, which all you can say here is duplicate medication. Or like I mentioned, if it's the wrong time, you want to just make a note of that. You can also just do so there. And you can say, So again, any of those really apply, duplicate medication, wrong time, it was actually given at 7 a.m. and you've informed the supervisor. You would hit OK, hit continue. And then the screen should be taking you to the next steps. So again, this is really just you reviewing the script one more time by doing so you're going to click on this down arrow which will again show you the show you the instructions it'll tell you the last time it was given and it'll show you the picture and so on and you'll continue to do this for all of the different medications here if it's the case that the resident refuses all of their um, meds for a particular pass you can do so and just have it reflect that they refused all of them if they've only refused, let's say, this particular medication, you can just go to here and you can write in your note. You'll notice that the exception for the previous one has been changed. You'll go back and make sure that that's adjusted back to general. If it's ever the case that certain medications require a vital that needs to be recorded for it, these will appear and you'll have to complete these in order to be able to complete the med pass. By looking at this and seeing the instructions, it says that hold if the systolic BP is under 95 and if the pulse is under 55. So again, just something to kind of be uh, mindful of. If you ever have questions, you can always reference it there. Again, if not, you can always reach out to the nursing or your supervisor. The next thing, as you saw on the previous screen, here it says that it requires witness and it's a controlled substance. So you would again, at the end, you'll uh, be asked to have someone else co-sign for you. But something else is that for any controlled substance, you'll also be asked to note or to put down what the blister card remaining is. So if it's 25, let's say, on the next med pass, whenever this is given, you'll then be asked to put in the, the next one. It'll also give you a message, just like you're seeing here, of what the previous blister card was. So again, if the previous one was 25, it should be 24, so on and so forth. So the last thing here is the record valve activity. If this resident on, is on um, the control monitoring or the BM monitoring, I should say, you can either say that the resident did not have a BM, you'll be asked to either put that you inquired or that it was a toilet sit. If it's yes, you'll be asked to complete some additional um, information here. If it was you that witnessed it, if it was self-reported, or if it was a third-party report, so again, maybe someone else saw it and then they informed you, you can always put that into this med pass. You'd be asked to put in the consistency, the size and amount, and any additional information that you have to put in there. Then you would do record all. This is just an attestation saying that you as the, the user, as the AMAB, have given all the medications during this particular med pass for serious. And then this is where you'd be required to have someone else come in and co-sign for you. And again, if there's ever questions about what your username is, or if someone else says they don't have one, everyone at your house should always have a username. So if there's ever questions, inform your manager 
and from there they can reach out to us at Health Information Management and we can make sure that every team member has one. That way there's no issues because unless you have someone else co-sign, you won't be able to move forward and record the meds for this particular resident. So now it brings you back to this initial screen. Like I mentioned, now that Sirius has had all of his meds administered for this morning med pass, you can proceed with doing all of the other med passes for all of the other residents, making sure that they're all grayed out. Once you've finished that, you're gonna go back to the home screen and you're gonna go to dashboard. You wanna make sure that you're going to the dashboard because you wanna make sure that your med pass is showing 100%. Because we only finished Sirius and we did not finish your other med passes for the morning, we see that this last column here, some of them show 100%, others show 80%, so on and so forth. So you wanna make sure that you're seeing 100% here. If you don't, you wanna make sure that you are checking to see if your MediSure is um, turned off. You wanna make sure that you have a good connection. And if you continue to see ongoing issues with the MedPass not updating when you've completed it, reach out to us. We'll try to troubleshoot with Quickmar, but there should be no delay. So previously, if MediSure was turned on, you would see a slight delay because of the syncing every 10 minutes. There should no longer be one. It should be right away. So like I said, make sure that you're always going back to this dashboard to check. However, like I said, is there, if there's ever any issues, feel free to reach out to us and we'll be able to assist from there. Again, like I said, you have your nursing team, you have your supervisors, you have us at Health Information Management. We also have some other super users that are available, so you can always reach out to those users. If you ever have, or have any questions on who those users are, you can reach out to us. If not, you can also try to reach out to your supervisors um, and they can help there. Thank you so much, and again, stay tuned for the next videos that will be coming out with 